Hello, Instagram. It's the interns. Let's see if we can get Father Joe on here. Father Joe. Here he is. We're so excited for our live video tonight with me. My name is Cecilia. This is Vinny. Um, once we get Father Joe on here, we're going to have a ball of a time <laughs> reflecting on our hearts. What does this make say? Deeper prayer and reflection. Wow, uh, that's like maybe. Oh. Um, oh, oh, a grateful heart. We're reflecting on why our hearts are grateful tonight. Um, and it's going to be really good. We have a really good Bible passage lined up. Some really good calming reflections. And Father Joe is going to be super awesome in helping us to lead that. Um, we appreciate all you guys. And we're really grateful that we have so many wonderful followers and supporters. I think Father Joe might be popping on in a minute. Hello, Father Joe. Let's get you in. Connecting. Hello, team. Hi, Father Joe. How are hey. you? Hey. Great. Look, you all are bundled up there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> A little fireside chat. Yeah. yeah, I love it. You know? Oh, We're in Milwaukee. Is... Let's uh, let's embrace it. I say, you know. I know. Can you hear us all right? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. We're on a back patio of one of our houses, um, right. so we might hear some noises of this city, um, that's right. but that's to be expected. So, mm -hmm. with us, we have we already kind of introduced ourselves. I'm Cecilia. Yeah. Vinny. We're both interns at Pope's Prayer Network USA. Mm -hmm. um, favorite food, salad. Vinny's favorite food. What's your favorite food? Um, I'm Italian, so I like like a good lasagna. What's your favorite food? Oh golly, um, yeah, good pizza. Um, I do like a nice deep dish, but sort of any kind of pizza is a good kind of pizza. Yeah, true. I have another fun question to throw at y'all. What is your favorite type of tree? Mine is a crepe myrtle. <laughs> All right, you got to unpack that for us, Cecilia. Yeah. Tell us. Okay. Tell us more. I had a crepe myrtle tree outside of my window oh. at home, and every year they're really cool. so. Like I think once or twice a year they'll shed their bark, and so you mm. literally can go and pick up these pieces off the ground of like this shaved wood, and it's just gorgeous. And they have the most beautiful pink flowers, and like it's kind of mm. like a webby design that the tree grows in oh so it's gorgeous so that's why it's my favorite love it love it um, Vinny, how about you i don't know father joe you want to take that one quick I <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'll go with an oak tree like you know can't go wrong uh, majestic huge old uh acorns Do, is that true a those come off of oaks, right? You know, little squirrels and critters like those. So, uh, oak tree. Mm. I think uh, I think I'd go with arborvitae. It's like one of the only trees that I know the name of. <laughs> so, gotta be the favorite. <laughs> okay, T tell us what what's good about that tree. Um, I don't know too much about arborvitaes, but you know about arborvitaes? I've never heard of them. I don't know. Okay. I think uh, some of them are in my neighborhood back home. So, okay. yeah. And Vinny's the only local boy um, of the True. three of us you're seeing tonight. So, uh, he's he know, all things Milwaukee. That's mm -hmm. tried and true. Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Um, great. Yeah. Happy to be back. This is uh, so two of three. So, we were here last week. We're here now. We'll be here next week. A, a trilogy, a, a triduum, a trinity, whatever, you know, good things come in threes, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like in some of these, awesome. in these movies, you know, that have three, like, you know, the, the middle one is really central, right? It has to like tie together the first and the last. It has to like kind of keep the momentum going, but even make it stronger. So that's, uh, that's what we're hoping for tonight. Mm -hmm. 
right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Father Joe, you're a priest. Um, would you like to open us, open us up in prayer this evening? I would be delighted. And, um, you know, special occasion for us. So, okay, here's a little, little image from uh, our ministry. So Sacred Heart uh, is one of the key devotions of the Pope's Prayer Network. And, um, you know, the heart of who we are, the heart of Jesus. Here's another, here's the backside of that same one. And uh, tomorrow is the feast of St. Margaret Mary Alico, who is uh, one of our patrons. And in fact, this is the 100th anniversary of her canonization. So she was a French sister that lived in the 1600s, had these series of powerful visions around the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And um, so we happy to honor her tomorrow. This is the eve tonight. And um, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll do the, the daily offering. O oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we offer you our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. For all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, reparation for sin, the reunion of all Christians. We offer them for our bishops and for all members of the Apostleship of Prayer, and in particular for those recommended by the Holy Father this month. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Pope's intention this month, uh, then you're Cecilia, do you recall what, what that is? Yeah. So, um, so this month, the Pope's intention is to pray for all lay women in the church and where they're mm -hmm. called, um, which is beautiful because literally wherever you want to go, as long as you feel led by God, that is fulfilling his call in the church. So I want to mm -hmm. be and I want to work in midwifery and work with moms and pregnancy mm -hmm. and crisis pregnancy to help them to choose life. And that is being a lay woman in the church and fulfilling God's call and supporting the church's mission because I'm living out God's call in my life. So we need to pray mm -hmm. for so many women and uh, just that they follow where God's taking them. Right on, right on. Um, yeah, as I look back, so my own experience, just, you know, some terrific teachers I've had in grade school, high school and college and beyond uh, who were lay women women of faith and wisdom, uh, you know, campus ministers, both those I've worked alongside, but also those who reached out to me when I was younger. So, um, yeah, for myself, many, many powerful lay women who have uh, been a good influence on me. Um, wonderful. We welcome back Vinny. Vinny was a little under the weather last week. Um, glad to see he's, he's kind of bounced back. You know, he's got the, the resilience that is true for all Milwaukeeans. So, uh, <laughs> Glad to see him again. And you, yeah, you what? You got the COVID test, but test yeah, negative. Luckily, negative. So um, yeah, bounce back fast. Uh, I don't know. Milwaukeeans can recover pretty well from like cold weather too. So we got we got some resiliency in our blood. A little change of season. <laughs> yeah. Allergens change. Yeah. So we're used. Yeah, all That's good right. now. So happy to happy to join. Yeah. That's right. Um, so this week, um, our topic is what's in my heart, awareness and emotion. What's in my heart, awareness and emotion. Um, so shameless self-promotion, a little book here that, yeah, somebody wrote who some of you know, and uh, yeah, I'll draw on a few themes from there. Um, but yeah, kind of connect into the Sacred Heart spirituality that's really the core of uh, Pope's Prayer worldwide. And, you know, just that strong sense of the heart of Jesus being fully human, fully divine. And, you know, as much as we can, uniting our hearts with the heart of Christ. Um, so we'll, we'll do a couple little exercises and reflections connected with that tonight. Um, and let's see, last week, maybe a little recap, recap from last week, which was um, a heart is created, a heart is created. That was our title, I think, last week. And um yeah, Cecilia, anything you remember from last week that kind of stands out or that sticks with you from a week ago? Yeah, um, one of the beautiful things that I really loved that we focused on was kind of <clears throat> refocusing ourselves onto the beat of our heart inside and re mm -hmm. who we are and aligning it with who our heart is in that moment, whether it's mm -hmm. super busy, like 
because you're going, 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 just take a moment to breathe and say, hey, like, this is the beat of my heart. And um, kind of remembering how that is able to emulate Christ's heart and the mm-hmm. sacred heart of Jesus, mm-hmm. which is really beautiful because God gave us a heart. And just to focus back and to be like, yeah, God's with me still in my heart, um, mm-hmm. wherever I am. That was a really <laughs> beautiful gift. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, even maybe we'll, we'll kind of, so we'll revisit that little reflection. Maybe I'll just leave that uh, for a moment. Um, just uh, to start us off tonight. And, um, you know, St. Ignatius himself, he talks about the value of, of repetition, you know, of, of kind of some of these prayers that they can go deeper as we do them, not just once, but, you know, do them again. I've, you know, said the Our, Our Father many times, but there's also kind of always more fruit, more grace that we can gather there. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of just kick off with a little minute or two, just, um, heart exercise, and then we'll kind of continue on some, uh, connected points. So for everybody out there, we're glad you're joining us and, um, yeah, just put your hand on your heart for a moment. So put your hand on your heart and really just feel your heartbeat. Just feel your heartbeat. Okay. Just take a moment and... Maybe your heart is beating slowly and peacefully right now. It's in the evening in most of the USA or Canada. And maybe for some of us, it's kind of the end of a long day, but we're kind of slowing down. We're taking a break. Okay, so just to feel your heartbeat. You know, for other folks, maybe you're uh, just rushing back from some big events. Maybe you had a, a night class or picking up kids from soccer practice or something. Um, You know, you're kind of in a hurry, you're out of breath, your heart's beating fast. Okay, so just to notice your heartbeat. And also be aware of the emotions underneath that heartbeat. Okay, maybe there's a sense of peace there. Uh, Maybe some joy, maybe you just had a little meal with some family or friends. For other folks, maybe there's maybe a little stress, a little anxiety if you're feeling pressured or, you know, you didn't quite get done everything you hoped to do today. And also to notice your breath, to notice your breath as it connects with your heartbeat. So maybe you're breathing deeply and peacefully right now or... Maybe they're kind of shallow and rushed sort of breath. And let's also see our hearts as symbols of God's love for us. So that powerful love of God with us at every moment of every day. Just like our hearts bring life and love to all parts of our body, well... God's love gives us grace, strength, hope, that breath of life that flows from the Holy Spirit. And let's also be aware of the heartbeat of Jesus. So he has a sacred heart, a risen heart, a heart that's beating with love for us right now. The Lord who is risen the risen body of Jesus, and he has a wounded heart. His heart pierced by a sword as he hangs on the cross, that soldier's lance. And this is the risen Jesus, so it's a heart that's both glorified and yet also wounded. So Jesus knows what it's like to have a long day. Uh, He knows what it's like to feel the heat of the sun or the chill of a cold breeze. To be surrounded by family and friends and to feel at times sorrow, frustration. So for another moment, let's just feel our heartbeats. Recall the love of God. Recall the heart of Jesus beating with love for us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, keep our hearts close to your heart. May we unite our joys with your joy and, Lord, even our sorrows with your sorrows. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
the Son, the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, today we'll, you know, a little reflection on our own hearts, our own emotions, you know, that heart that's kind of, again, all over the culture, like what the, the heart hands, am I doing this right? Does Justin Bieber still do that? Is, is he still cool or is that so <laughs> 2000, 2014? Um, no. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> we got, you know, the heart emoji um, on Instagram. If you want to like something, you click a little heart. So, you know, the symbol is alive and well. But, uh, you know, our hearts, our hearts are a muscle. And this kind of understanding of the emotions being centered deep within us. Um, yeah, anyway, so the heart of Jesus, so different emotions Jesus feels. Um, you know, there's some different gospel passages where we get a sense of this. Um, let's see, I don't, Cecilia or Vinny, any of your theology classes or retreats ever touch on this, or is this anything you've ever considered, kind of the emotions of Jesus? Yeah, um, I, I know we were talking today about one passage in particular from uh, mm -hmm. from John actually about mm -hmm. when Jesus learned about the death of Lazarus. So yeah, I y'all, I have it ready actually. <laughs> Do it. Go for so it. Let me pull it out. It's John chapter eleven, verses thirty-two through thirty-five. Mm -hmm. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, "Lord." If you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who, came, who, had, who had come with her weeping, he became per perturbed and deeply troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how loved how he loved him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what are, uh, yeah, Cecilia and Vinny, maybe what are a couple, actually, there's a couple different emotions we kind of see in Jesus there. What are one or two that you notice? Yeah, I think the whole uh, concept of like Jesus weeping, I mean, like just mm -hmm. talking about like Jesus' emotions, the heart of Jesus, like it's, it's very human. I don't know. I, I think that's something that, like, Jesus is always, like, the son of God, but at the same time, like, he, mm -hmm. he came to earth to, like, connect with us and relate to us and, and love mm -hmm. us and show us how to love. Um, I just think that's, like, invaluable, especially from mm -hmm. reading scripture and reading the Bible. That's something that, I, I don't know, on average, like, you got you to gotta dig into your own emotions to be able to relate to it. So, mm -hmm. I have an empathetic vibe to it. I think uh, that's a lot of what Jesuit value is what the church, what... Um, just kind of like how we've been educating classrooms have always taught us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also in the passage, they used the word perturbed, mm -hmm. which is, um, which comes from the, from a Latin word, actually. I think it's per mm -hmm. per perturbed. I think it might actually even be the same thing. That's why mm -hmm. I know this word. I learned it in middle school mm -hmm. <laughs> from my Latin <laughs> class, but yeah it means that like you're upset, you're disrupted, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're thrown off, you're mm -hmm. disturbed. Um, so he was totally mm -hmm. not cool with the fact Lazarus had died. And then even after they said that he had wept, they say he loved Lazarus. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd say he had some pretty strong emotions in the whole passage. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah, even, you know, I think there's a really fascinating, you know, that kind of swirl of emotions that, you know, and we feel this too, like, sometimes it's like, I'm both happy, kind of, and sad at the same time, like, let's say, you know, probably our parents felt this uh, as they sent us off to college, right? Like, I'm so happy, you know, son, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so sad, because you don't live in my house. And, you know, your buddies aren't going to be coming over, making a mess in my basement. <laughs> Nintendo all the time, uh, you know, so sort of happiness and sorrow can happen side by side. Jesus, yeah, it's like sorrow, he's weeping, um, perturbed, this, yeah, like frustration, uh, this kind of churning in him, 
Um, and he loves Lazarus. So yeah, it's sort of all of those at the same time. You know, and I think for me, I like reflecting on this because yeah, okay, he is fully God, is fully human. You know, but to kind of emphasize that second part for a moment, like he's not sort of this uh, Iron Man, you know, like Marvel Comics fans, like, you know, he's just got it under control, no emotion, just like stone cold. He's not this stoic philosopher who's just like detached from it all, just on a mountaintop. Like he's there. These are his close friends. If you've had somebody die who you love, it's hard. It's sad. Jesus, we see that emotion in him. Um, how about, yeah, for maybe uh, our two uh, esteemed interns, how about, you know, there's also more positive feelings we see in Jesus. Any of those, like, come to mind? Uh, you know, maybe peace or joy? Is there any yeah, uh, passage? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a passage in Mark. Vinny, do you want to see if we can find that yeah. passage really quick? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we were talking about that earlier today, I think. Mm -hmm. Where Jesus loves children. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe it's Mark it's, uh, chapter 10, verse 16. There we go. All right. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. It's like right there. That one. <laughs> All right. So it's just, um, yeah, it's just a one liner. Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, it says, then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Yeah, so basically, I think what, what I'm trying to say is, like, I don't know, Jesus' connection for joy, especially with, like, children and how, like, he could see, like, their jovialness, their innocence, like, their love. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I mean, like, just having the ability to, like, bless someone with such, like, fortitude, with such love, um, I don't know, I think that's really special, especially his connection with children. I feel like children, like, it takes patience to relate to, to, like, to really like foster a relationship with since they're so young and they don't have like the cognitive abilities yet. But mm -hmm. I don't know, Jesus sees that hope and love in everyone. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I think from the perspective of a child, um, there's such a great, like everyone's like childlike faith. And it's like, what's childlike mm -hmm. faith? You know, it kind of stems from um, St. Therese of Lisieux who had like this beautiful childlike faith, just like doing the little things for God mm. um, because she just saw Christ and everything like she's a beautiful woman of faith but mm -hmm. also it's like from a child's perspective like they trust their parents so much you know mm -hmm. child there's a reason they say children don't lie is because they just trust so quickly and it's like having that mm -hmm. childlike faith means to trust in Christ so quickly and just doing what he desires of your heart without asking but also like being that vessel of love to others because they mm -hmm. love so easily, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when something's off, they'll, they'll tell you. And mm -hmm. so that, that brutal honesty is also in a way love. So I think it's really interesting to like really reflect on that childlike faith from a child's perspective perspective. But mm -hmm. I think Vinny brings in some good perspectives because most of us are adults and we, it's like, how do we love a child? Well, how do we see like that love that God has for them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Um, yeah. You know, and sometimes in the gospels, we're even, we're kind of invited to sort of reflect on the emotions of Jesus. So, you know, Mark's gospel, Mark often is kind of like just a bare bones description, like kind of short and sweet to the point. So Mark describes him okay, embracing these children, blessing them, places his hands on them. And, you know, in a way, I think he just in, sort of opens the door for us to kind of ponder that experience. So, you know, John's gospel, he kind of lays it out a little more clearly. He says, OK, Jesus wept. Jesus felt perturbed. Jesus loved him. You know, Mark, it's kind of like a bare description. But, you know, again, think about times you've been around kids. Like, imagine like a whole bunch of kids around you and Jesus looking at them, you know, especially little kiddos like Okay, my favorite mass in the world is like a kindergarten mass because, okay, in one way it's just chaos. Like kids are like falling off the pews and burping and like 
you know, pulling on their teacher's arm, like I have to go to the bathroom. And by that, I mean, five minutes ago. Um, so there's chaos and like the kids are singing and like, they're just fun to be around. Um, you know, Jesus maybe just feeling that joy that comes from being around little kiddos. Um, I don't, are you too old enough to have like nieces or nephews or maybe not quite yet? I like kind of, my sisters are like old enough to have their own kids, but neither of them are married and have kids yet. So mm -hmm. I think Vinny, you're in the same boat. Like they just haven't come mm -hmm. along yet. Yeah. Yeah. My brother just got married. So hoping for kids soon, hopefully I'll be coming up. <laughs> yeah yeah or even i don't know like younger cousins maybe or i have some young cousins yeah definitely i'm the mm -hmm. youngest on my of all the cousins on both sides of my family except for my little brother but he's not my cousin he's my sibling so mm -hmm. i've i do have a lot of smaller cousins mm -hmm. that are just like so they're just so intuitive like they want to learn about everything it's beautiful mm -hmm. and they just are always asking questions about the smallest things. It's like, wow, I don't think about that. I don't think about that grain of dirt on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. Uh, yeah, my sister is married, has three kids. Um, she's a year younger than me, and her oldest is eight. And yeah, got to say, Uncle Life, pretty terrific. Like, you know, even I can sort of go over there, like, bring him candy, play in the backyard. And then like, just as they're having their meltdowns before a nap, like then I go home to Jesuit house. And then, you know, my sister sort of has to deal with all the extra pieces of it, but uncle life, pretty terrific. Um, I'm unky, unky Joe when I go over there. Um, and they kind of know, like, you know, I say mass, they know I'm a priest, but you know, sometimes they don't totally like, they'll be at mass. They'll be like, well, why isn't uncle Joe saying this mass? And my sister's like, well, there's, you know, there's like a, a thousand priests in the city of St. Louis alone. And uncle Joe doesn't live like, you know, he doesn't say all the masses always. And they're like, Oh, well, why not? I'm like, well, he, you know, they're, they're little like, you know, they're making sense of it. Um, Anyhow, all these things. So seeing Jesus, his human experience, you know, and again, doing our part in a prayerful spirit to just kind of draw our own hearts into his heart, you know, like our joys. What are times we felt joyful, um, times we felt sorrow? And, you know, to notice that, to notice our own hearts, but then not to just kind of keep it in here, like, oh, okay, now I noticed. But to make that part of the relationship so that I'm now, okay, Lord, I want to bring my experience to you. I want to read the gospels and be drawn in to your life. Um, you know, even let's say, okay, Jesus loved Lazarus. Um, so I don't know, Cecilia and Vinny, is there like, think of one or two people that you love being around. Um, you feel loved when you're around them. Um, could be family, could be friends. I don't know, anybody come to mind um, for that experience of love in your life? Yeah, I have a handful. Um, one is my fiance. Um, he's not here right now, <laughs> but I, you know, like tonight he, he like called me and he goes, what are you doing right now? And I was like, um, I just got off a call <laughs> and he was like, I'm downstairs. I have a surprise. And he actually took me to go get takeout. We get this Indian takeout right downtown. And so it's just like little act of love, like thinking about me and being like, also, I'm going to take you to Trader Joe's. Like, I want to get you a plant, like, or flowers. Like, you love, I like love plants and flowers. So I got this cute little, like, fern. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> and then my roommate, mm -hmm. um, you know, just those acts of kindness in the morning, she we both have kind of funky sleep schedules. I get up for, to go to the hospital and do nursing stuff. Some days of the week, she gets up at funky hours or comes in at late hours because she's an EMT. So mm -hmm. it's like she, mm -hmm. you know, just like when I get up, she like doesn't mind if I wake her up. And she's like able to love mm -hmm. me in that way. And like, I'm able to love her by being the same way. Like both, that's one reason we live really well together is because when we wake each other up in the middle of the night, like, we both just fall right back asleep and we're like, oh, it's just them. <laughs> At least they're here. At least they're safe. And it's just, so that's another act of love that I see in my mm -hmm. life. And 
just feeling those emotions. Vinny, I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah, I'd say a big one for me, um, kind of like what we were talking about when I was like sick last week. I hadn't uh, like connected with my parents for a while during the semester. Like I was kind of like busy with studies, like busy helping out with like just random stuff on campus and everything, getting involved. Mm -hmm. But uh, they randomly reached out, um, kind of like coincidentally, and um, they brought over like some good like like new October fall like snack treats. So there was like some cookies, um, some like warm hot sandwiches, um, some soup. Uh, like some Tylenol for some headaches. <laughs> that was just like extremely appreciated. I don't know. I like when I was doing it, like when we first went quarantine and we had to like go off school, like, it was so nice being home with them again. And like similar to like high school when I would always just come back and like helping them like prep meals or like do little like walks like down the street. Like our whole neighborhood was like actually kind of like lively um, despite like the COVID situation, like people were going out walks, more people were getting outside. So it was kind of fun to see like the vibe of the neighborhood change. And, uh, my parents are like, getting more connected with like their community near them. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I would just say, yeah, my parents, I definitely, uh, I was feeling the love a lot when, uh, when I kind of get <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, you know, and again, the Christian experience, okay. I'm a Jesuit. These two are Jesuit educated. So this, this sense of like a sacramental experience of life that, okay, these aren't just like random nice things that happen, but okay, this is God's love coming to us through people that he has placed in our lives. Okay. Cecilia, fiance, Vinny, mom and dad, uh, me, Jesuit brothers, okay, my sister, family, you know, this way that Christ reaches out to us through real people, you know, this, in a sense, kind of ongoing incarnation, if you will, that Jesus, who is the incarnate Son of God, but also comes to us in the body of Christ, okay, which is the church. Again, this kind of sacred heart image of, like, it's, it's still his heart at the center of that body of Christ, that he's the one giving us that life and love, even through others, Um you know, and for St. Ignatius Loyola, so the examine prayer, the examination of conscience prayer. So, okay, this is something we can do at the end of the day. So we did this little daily offering at the beginning of our uh, Instagram live today. So I'm offering my life to Christ at the beginning of the day or podcast, whatever that might be. And then at the end of the day, I can sort of look back and see like, okay, Lord, what happened today? Um, how are you present? Um, my little offering, how did that go? Did I sort of pull it back halfway through when things got a little rough? You know, and, and tied into that examen can be a, a kind of deeper awareness of my own heart. Like, what's, what's going on inside of me? How am I feeling? And again, it's not just a kind of, you know, looking at my belly button, but rather like, Lord, I want to look in my heart and then offer that to you. Um, I, I don't know, maybe other people are really good at this. I've had to kind of work at this. Like, I'll sort of notice that at the end of the day, kind of like, you know, I'm in kind of a bad mood, perhaps, at the end of a day. And it, it sort of takes me a few minutes in prayer, like, okay, Lord, like, what happened today? And Like, why am I feeling bad? Or, Lord, help me sort of unpack bad a little bit. Like, it, am I sad, angry, something else? Um, okay, I have a little journal, okay? A notebook there. I'm not going to read to you from it because, hey, this is between me and Jesus and my superior. Um, it's helpful to me to sort of jot down a few of these things, okay? I, you know, took some journalism classes back in the day, so writing kind of helps me. It doesn't have to be super long, but even just a few little words like, okay, joyful moment, moment of sorrow, uh, moment of hope, Christ, how are you present? Um, again, this kind of reflection on my own heart, bringing that to the heart of Christ. Um, again, I, I have to kind of work at it. Again, maybe other folks are sort of good at this immediately, but uh, you know, it's taking a little effort on my part. Mm -hmm. I don't, is this, maybe some, is this, is this a, a man woman difference a bit? Like, I don't know, maybe some women are better at this than some guys. Uh, maybe not, I don't know, any yeah, words I of wisdom. <laughs> um, just kind of connecting in. I mean, I 
it takes me some time too. I don't think I think it's definitely more of a personality thing. I don't necessarily think I'm a man mm-hmm. woman thing. Because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I find myself like I'm kind of down at the end of the day, and I'm like, oh, what, where am I? What, Celia? What are you thinking? Like, I got to pull myself mm-hmm. out of it some way somehow, you know? Mm-hmm. And I kind of get unmotivated sometimes, but. I definitely think it's more of a personality, like maybe even the point of life you're in, because through life we ebb and flow. Um, and one thing I learned from my first boss on uh, my first job ever in high school, hmm. her name was actually Karen. So, but she was super awesome, loved her. <laughs> and she, um, she was like, I, it's the end of my senior year of high school, and I came in and she's like, "So, yo, what's wrong?" And I was like, "What?" And she's like something's wrong and you're gonna tell me and I was like okay like I don't know like I'm just I've been so tired lately I sleep 12 hours at night and then I'm up during the day and I still just want to go to bed and she's like you're depressed and I had never realized in my entire life that you ebb and flow through depressions and through highs of your life not in like not like bipolar that's not as normal but it is normal for like at different points in your life to experience depression. And for me, I was like, my body was physically depressed because mm. I was like going through a huge transition, graduating high school, moving for like 12, mm-hmm. 1200 miles away from my parents, like from Austin to Milwaukee. It's a huge, <laughs> huge, huge move. So I was just like, my body was just like, I don't know what's going on. Like, so it was just kind of shutting down. Like, so it's just super fatigued. Mm. And she taught me that. She taught me a lot of stuff. But that's one of the things she taught me is, like, you know, like, this is normal. You're going to go through points of depression. So that could be a part of it, too, is, like, we have in flow. And mm-hmm. some days of your life, you'll be able to pull yourself out of those hardships or, like, those kind of downs mm-hmm. in the evening easier than others. And some days you just won't have them. And other days you'll have them. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a personality mm-hmm. stage of life sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's my mini rant <laughs> yeah and just briefly uh, what a gift that this teacher <laughs> saw that in you knew yeah. you cared about you even kind of had the courage to say it um yeah. and that yeah she was right on and kind of helped you to have a deeper self-awareness uh during a kind of challenging time yeah yeah so mm-hmm. Many of y'all are listening, just if you see that in somebody you know, just call them out and just be there for them and love them and help Mm -hmm. them through whatever hard time they're going through or transition for that matter. Mm -hmm. Benny, any any thoughts? Yeah. I have a, I probably have a, a, a similar perspective as you, Father Joe, like, like a lot of days at the end of the day, if you're just like exhausted or like little things kind of like triggered you or bit at you like throughout the day, like. They can compile up pretty fast if you aren't, like, contemplative or reflective on them at all. But mm-hmm. I noticed, like, like, if I'm entering prayer at the end of the day or I'm meditating or reflecting or whatever I'm doing, <clears> and I'm like, like, Lord, help me through this. Like, Lord, like, get me out of this mm-hmm. state. Get me out of this mindset. Usually, like, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the times it takes, like, action on top of the prayer to be able to, like, <laughs> really like, manifest it and have it come through to your life. So, mm-hmm. for example, like, if I'm praying and I, I get like an intuitive feeling like, oh man, like I want to change my mental state. Like I want to change like how I'm feeling, how I'm thinking. I'll do like some stretches or I'll do some yoga or like I'll do like some jumping jacks quick, wet my face like with water. <laughs> like honestly, the little things like that can totally change your mindset. Like how you're positioning, how you're feeling, like like how you're standing. Like I think it totally influences everything. Like if you're looking down like, like at the floor, like kind of like mopey, like of course you're going to feel bad. Like your body's like in tune with what you're feeling or thinking but Mm -hmm. then uh, if you totally change it and you're like upright and like i think there's ways to like like cognitively and consciously like kind of work out of those subsets or like those bad Mm -hmm. moments and then kind of when you're back in that good state i don't know this is kind of what like i learned a little bit like Mm -hmm. through education like you really should be making decisions when you're in like a good state of mind versus like a bad state of mind or or when you're in a state of love versus like Mm -hmm. a state of like sadness because the, whatever you're in that good mm-hmm. state like you're gonna want to keep making good decisions and going that good route versus like when you're caught caught in a rut like it's harder to get out of the rut if you're like still stuck in the rut so mm-hmm. i've just noticed that like depending on like mm-hmm. how 
my physiology is like i i want to change it quick so i could like kind of get out of that but at the end of the day like i think it definitely mm-hmm. um I, it could happen to all of us like yeah. definitely also like like if you're just like at the end of the day and you're just like i want to make salsa like i don't really want to pray like maybe set a reminder on your phone like read your bible pray, yeah yeah like have a pop up mm-hmm. like alarm like don't forget to pray mm-hmm have a like, little reminder because sometimes as well like if i'm down like i'll just catch myself in like a cycle of like going through facebook going through instagram yes. going through social media <laughs> over and it's like okay like mm-hmm. i've done this for 45 minutes what am i what am i maintaining mm-hmm. now? right or, or what am i running from that... yeah like, yeah, yeah, from? yeah it's like mm-hmm. that's one thing that's really awesome is we have the app yeah. the click to pray app so it's like we can use that and like right. guide us to pray like little quick meditation debrief mm-hmm. or it's like, Hey, like I've really been wanting to read the Bible lately, you know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and I'm just on social media right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I have time right now. Like I've been on social media for 45 minutes. I don't have to be somewhere for another 30 or I don't have to be somewhere for another five minutes. And it's a two minute walk. Like, mm-hmm. let me just read three verses. <laughs> let me just open it up, p- play mm-hmm. a little Bible roulette and like, try to, like pick yourself up and be like oh my gosh and then try to like yeah. think about that deeper and like have that brain exercise of like thinking mm-hmm. deeply and you can use that as to where you're walking to for your brain's thoughts and ideas to stem from too so yeah right on yeah and you know i'm thinking of saint ignatius also has some great writings on, on consolation and desolation um which are different spiritual experiences but often enough they have an emotional component you know I mean, just even those words, right? Consolation, I'm consoled, a sense of peace and joy. Desolation is sorrow, anxiety. Okay, to notice that and to see like, okay, also this is a part of life. Like Jesus himself is sad and angry sometimes. Like that doesn't mean he's doing something wrong. It doesn't mean he's made some mistakes. More like, yeah, actually sometimes that's the the proper response to seeing somebody struggle that I care about or having a loss in my life. And, you know, Cecilia, you're, you're right on too that. Yeah. Other times I can sort of be dragging myself into desolation by wasting time or sort of, you know, this kind of envy of the fabulous people I see online or something. Uh, Hopefully no one's envying the three of us right now. Uh, There's no reason to, um, So that, yeah, there's, again, this kind of awareness then brought into prayer and then kind of the wisdom of the Lord, even through the saints. Okay, what do I do next? Get some exercise, like Vinny said. Talk to a friend. um, Break out of some bad habits to turn to the Lord. Yeah. So right on. Yeah. Father Joe, I don't know if you have any specific item that, like, you kind of use to Mm -hmm. draw you back to the Lord in times of hardship, but also in mm-hmm. times of joy when mm-hmm. you haven't like prayed in a lo- little while, but like, I, I don't know mm-hmm. what you use to bring yourself back to God. Sure. Sure. I'm also great questions. Maybe we'll even dive into this more next week. Um, cause we're, I don't know, starting to come up on 45 minute Mark. I don't know. There's, mm-hmm. I guess Instagram lets you go as long as you want, but we'll, <laughs> yeah, we should, we should. Come. Yeah. Boy. Uh, you know, real briefly, I'd say actually having a kind of structure of prayer is really helpful because otherwise it can be like, I feel close to God, I'm going to pray. And when I don't feel close to God, I'm not going to pray. Well, actually, that kind of ought to be the opposite (laughs) or better yet, like, okay, I'm just going to put in a little prayer time every day, no matter how I'm feeling, because then I'm going to keep that relationship going. And then that's going to help me no matter what. Yeah. That's, That's a awesome. short answer. Like, yeah. Yeah. Having, having like the self discipline to be able to like keep the keep the routine yeah. every day. You I, have a routine. Yeah. You brush your teeth every morning. Mm-hmm. Maybe you read like a quick <laughs> prayer mm-hmm. while like scroll like your social mm-hmm. media. Like follow some good prayer accounts. Read through mm-hmm. like a quick reflection. Like. No. Yep. That's so easy. That's so mm-hmm. easy. And and it's baby steps. I feel like you don't have mm-hmm. to start. You don't have to be like I'm gonna the rosary every day. It's your first move. Like it could be like. I'm going to just think for 15 seconds in the evening. Thank you, mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. This, this, and this gift. And I'm grateful for this. Amen. Easy right on. Time. Right on. Um, yeah, you both mentioned some good resources that are out there. I mean, there's, you know, there's some junk online. There's also junk food. But 
There's also healthy food and some nice stuff online. Um, so yeah, click the Prey app is nice. Um, other quick shout outs folks could look for. Oh, oh, I don't see any. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we have, yeah, some nice little resources on our own Instagram or our webpage for uh, Pope's Prayer. Um, and we have uh, our app, like, yeah. Pray, and we have a rosary beads. This guy, shameless plug. Through the e-rosary app, it's kind of like a fun little Fitbit praying reminder. Right. Buzzes on your wrist. Or if yep. you even have a smartwatch, or even you don't have a smartwatch, or you have some sort of cell phone, um, that mm -hmm. can you can set an alarm, like have it set an alarm and just maybe just buzz at you or just like mm -hmm. pop up on your screen, like with no notifications. Also You're very, crazy. very stylish, all black. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> also the apps are free the the e-rosary is great you you can order that one online and you can use the app either way um next week we are coming back we're going to talk about uh, a grateful heart my spiritual top 10 spiritual top 10 um that's kind of a fun one i've done that in some theology on taps before um and uh yeah, so spirit of gratitude and our own personal spiritual top tens. Um, in Advent, we're probably going to roll out a little online retreat, maybe through YouTube or maybe Instagram as well, where we'll do, yeah, some kind of Advent reflections. Um, other quick things coming up. Anything else folks should know about? Not that I can think of. I mean, we're getting, for our personal office, like we're getting in the process of, to move so <laughs> for safety of everybody involved that would be awesome and just that we can pick up and keep going smoothly and um being on track where the lord wants us so and we'll be praying who watches hey. listens and everyone else in the world and <laughs> yeah for your safety wonderful um so october is also um a month devoted to mary we had the feast of the rosary um just about a week ago so we will simply close with a Hail Mary. Just a shout out to our mother in heaven who loves us. Um, maybe one of our interns, do you want to lead us in that closing prayer? All right. Um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Father Joe. Thank you, all of our wonderful followers who tuned in. And we want to just let you guys all know we're praying for you. We love you all. And we're mm -hmm. praying for everyone else in the world, too. And wherever everyone else is at and their hardships and their joys, we want to be with you guys in them. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next week. Yep. Sounds good. See you, Father Joe. Bye.